thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to work on an art journal page with some paper dolls kits that have come from an Etsy shop called Crazy Fox Paper. The designer is in Ontario, Canada. So I'm going to get busy and create some fun, fun pages. I've got some wonderful ideas on using these really cute paper doll kits. So stay tuned and watch me and see what I create. So there will be a link in the description box below to this Etsy shop for um, Crazy Fox Paper and a discount. So she provided a discount. So if anybody watching this video would like to purchase her kits at a discounted rate, you put the code in at your checkout in Etsy and you'll get a discount. So um, anyway, but this is going to be really fun. I've got some great ideas and it's going to be usable not only for these paper doll kits, but for any paper doll kit that has has tabbed clothes that you put on to and dress a doll. I have a great idea brewing around in my head. But I want to use mine on an art journal page because that's what I love to do is create an art journal background and then add paper dolls to it. So I'm going to use this rabbit and fox and raccoon. Um, this is Clover Rabbit, Penelope Fox, and Aurora Raccoon. They are just darling. And then they've got clothes. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut out the three main characters and they have a stand so if you cut this stand out and you make the slits you could use this as a regular paper doll uh, kit you know like uh, we did when we were kids and you fold this and you put it in the slots and the doll would stand up and then you can dress it because I'm using it in an art journal I'm going to cut around her and fussy cut this bottom base off so they're going to be cut out without their bases just for the way I'm going to use these kits the so fun this is this is why we're doing this it's kind of a collaboration to give you some ideas of different ways to look at things maybe you hadn't thought of using a paper art doll in in your art journal so hopefully this will give you some fun ideas and this is going to be a blast so can't wait to get started I'm going to trim those out and I'm also going to fussy cut out some of their outfits and I am going to leave the tabs on the clothing so and then I'll come back and show you the next step here are my three characters that I fussy cut out and um, as I've always talked about I don't like the white edges on the side so I'm using an Ecoline brush pen and my favorite one to use is number 407. It's a deep ochre. And I just like to go around those edges. I use this color. Sometimes I use black. Black is very, very stark though, of course. And this deep ochre just colors that edge and um, it's like an antique -y color. So I really like that. So I'm gonna go around my edges with a pan just to do, just to make them look a little bit nicer so that they don't have those white edges. And then I'm going to start decorating the characters themselves. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with their little cute little shoes. They've got these cute little ballerina type slippers with crisscrosses. And I have some ribbon, the finest, the skinniest pink ribbon I could find in my stash. And it is three millimeter, but it's still too wide. So what I'm going to do is just take a little piece of it and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just cut right up the middle and split it to make it really, really, really skinny because I'd like the shoes to have ribbons on them. So that's what I'm going to do is just split that ribbon. Then I end up with little skinny pieces and I'm going to just take my art glitter glue and glue it into place wrapping it around the back and doing the little crisscrosses on both of those shoes on the raccoon with the pink shoes. And I forgot to mention in the beginning that I used about 120 pound weight uh, cardstock that I printed this kit out onto just so that they'd be nice and stiff. So here's what it looks like. See the one on the right has the ribbons and the one on the left doesn't. And I just think the ribbons just look so cute. It looks even better in person than it does on camera, but it just adds something really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the ribbons to the other side as well. So what I did at the base of the shoe, at the tip of the shoe, is just cut a little tiny slit where I could slip that ribbon underneath. And see how over here it actually looks like the ribbon is tucked underneath the toe of the shoe coming out. And then I put glue across the front and I'm letting it dry. And then I'm gonna turn it over and glue it on the back. So see what that looks like on the back. 
So there they are laced up and it's super, super cute. Look at that. Oh, I love them. So cute. And I'm going to do something to the bottom, but I need to let those ribbons dry on the front and on the back. And so I'm going to just put that one aside and I'm going to grab the fox. And the fox has only two crisscrosses, so I'm going to go ahead and use a white thin ribbon, but I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to leave it thick and do the same thing. So her little um, crosses are going to be a little bit thicker. So same thing, I cut my little tiny little slit over to the edge of the shoes and then I put my ribbon across, crisscrossed it, glued it down, and then I'm letting it dry. Then I'll trim these off and flip them over and glue them down on the back side. So here's how those look with a little bit wider of the ribbon because I didn't split it and they're just a little bit different and it's cute. I like the, ch the difference between the two. So now I took some white embroidery floss, just some six strand embroidery floss and tied a little tiny bow and I'm going to glue that on her shoes up at the top of the ribbons, one on each side. So I ended up putting the bows right in the middle, just above where the little crisscrosses were. And then it makes it look like they're tied at the ankles. Isn't that cute? I love it. Looks so stinking cute. Okay, now I'm going to use some uh, Nouveau Drops. These are the solid opaque ones in Simply White and Bubblegum Blush. For the tip of these shoes, you can see how the shoe is pink and then it's got the little white highlight on it. So with Nouveau Drops, because it's wet, it's a wet medium, I'm going to cover this in pink. It's just going to make that little shoe look like it's a little patent leather shoe. It's just going to be just darling. And I'm kind of leaving where that white spot is. And then right away I'm going to take the white one and fill in that white spot. And then they'll just kind of blend in together. And you can even take a little straight pin and kind of just spread it into each other and then make a little teardrop shape out of it so it'll make it look like the highlight. So cute. See if you can see that. So now she looks like she's got a little pink patent leather shoe. So I'm going to do that to the other side and then I'm going to just put plain white over on this side so they'll both have shiny shoes. There they are. Super cute. Love the little shiny shoes and I'm going to let them completely dry so I need to put them aside for a while. And Nuvos do take a bit of time, so probably 30 minutes or so. And now I'm going to work on the little bunny. She's got the cute little shoes but they're not um, laced. They've got straps and where this little part comes off here I'm going to put a little seed bead to make it look almost like a uh, button. So what I'm going to do with those, let's put these aside. What I'm going to do with those is use a clear Nouveau drop and a gold seed bead. And the clear will still show the, the teal color underneath because I love that little teal shoes. So I'm going to just put a little line of Nouveau clear across the little strap and while it's wet, take a seed bead with my little tweezers and it's going to end up looking like the little button. So just pop a little seed bead right on there and then it'll dry right into the new bows and stay put. Super cute. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Put a line, add a little bead, And then I'm going to put some Nouveaux on the tips in clear. So then you'll still see the teal, but they'll still they'll be shiny little shoes. So cute. Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, so see if you can see that. See the little beads that make it look like little buttons and then the little shiny shoes. Super cute. Gonna let the three of them dry. I flipped them upside down 
so the feet are at that end to let them dry so I don't bump into it. And now I'm going to do the same thing to their noses with Nouveau Drops. So on the raccoon, I'm going to use black and white, the fox black and white, and the bunny pink and white. Same thing. Cover the this main spot with black Nouveau Drops and leave a little space for where that little highlight would be. And then come back in while it's very, very wet, right when you've applied it, and put a tiny, tiny bit of white, as tiny as you can get, and then take a needle and spread it out to make that little highlight. Now they're going to have raised shiny noses. Super cute! So while those are drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut out these um, mushrooms to use on the my pages page. pages with the mushrooms, they come with stands and the mushrooms have little slits where if you were going to use them the traditional way, you would cut the stand, fold it, and put it through the little slots and stand your mushrooms up. But I'm using them on an art journal page, so I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to take my scissors and as I cut them out, I'm going to round these bottoms and cut the points off that, the edges right here and trim them out like that and they're going to go on my art journal page. So I printed two pages of the mushrooms and that way I would have two of each. There's, there's three different kinds so now I've got two of each. I'm going to do the same thing that I do with the paper dolls. I'm going to go around these edges and use my little brush pen to just quickly take that white edge away, make it look a little bit nicer. And then what I want to do, I have an idea for making the mushrooms look dimensional. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, on the second one, I'm going to just cut off the top. So I've got the little mushroom cap, and I'm not doing that little dark part underneath. I'm just doing the top part of the mushroom. And I'm going to fix that edge. Okay, and then what I want to do is take some pop squares. These are popped out squares. You can get them at any craft store, online, a dollar stores carry them. It's just like foam core and then it peels on both sides. It is sticky so you can make things dimensional. They're used mostly in card making. So what I'm going to do with it is to take a pop dot, and I think I'm going to cut it in half because it's a big square. I can use one square for two different ones. And I'm going to put it Put that pop dot right there, a little bit up from the edge. And then when I glue this piece onto the bottom piece, I'm going to make like a horseshoe shape at the top to glue that top point down. I'm going to put a little glue right here and a little glue right here. And then when I put this on the top, Just kind of line it up, hold it down at the top so it glues, and then glue it here. Oh, it's so cute. I love it already. So look what you end up with. It's dimensional, like it pops up, so it looks rounded and three-dimensional instead of just being flat. So cute. So I'm going to do that to all three styles of mushrooms. Same here. I'm going to take this, this one, and this one, and just cut those cap parts off, pop them up just in the center part, and glue the top part down so that it'll bow up and make it nice round cute shape on top of the mushrooms. So look at these adorable mushrooms. So cute, and they all have little dimensional caps on them. So the caps are raised and when they're laying down flat they look all rounded and dimensional. So cute. Love how they turned out. So I'm going to work on a background. I'm using my large size Ranger Dilutions journal, art journal. And I'm going to have the center part be the lightest blue to a darker blue and a darker blue. So easy background, not a lot of thought into it. I'm just using acrylic paints, putting light in the middle, and then 
the indigo blue and then this deep deep well that was cobalt and this is a deep deep indigo blue it's almost like a really dark navy okay and then I'm gonna just use a baby wipe and spread the paint around And I'm going in circles. The moist baby wipe helps to spread out the paint. And then when I get to the next color, I'm going to go into that lighter color so it's going to make a make it blend out. But put something behind here. Protect my page before it. There we go. And then do my darkest color to the outer edge. And then I'm going to blend it just a little bit more. And then patting it instead of swirling it. Once you get those colors done, you can see your circles. If you take and pat that baby wipe, it's going to take away those circles that you could see from swirl on it. And it just softens it up. It makes it look a lot better. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted it to look like. I love it. Okay, now I'm going to blend out this side the same way. And my baby wipes, I take and cut them. I cut them into halves and then I put it into one of these little anchor containers with a lid. They're just half size and they're easier to work with. Okay, blended it out. Now I'm going to do the combining them, trying to get them to look mixed together, and then do the patting. Pat, pat, pat. And it's going to have words on it, and it's going to have the animals in front of it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just the background. You want it to look nice, but I don't have to worry about it being absolutely perfection. I kind of like that texture and effect that the padding does to it. It makes it look really nifty. Okay, so I've got my dark outer edges and then my light in the middle. That looks great. Super fun. Now I'm going to let that dry. And I have this rubber stamp. This is really cute grass stamp. It came from a stamp set by Posh Rubber Stamps from about 20 years ago. And it's a cling, so you just peel it and stick it on your block. And I'm going to go ahead and use Ranger Archival Ink in two different greens, leaf green and olive. And I'm going to stamp that image at the bottom. And I know that it's a really dark, this is really dark with blues. And this green is probably not going to show up too terribly green because I'm putting ink, stamped ink over, over paint. And I'm slipping a hard book underneath so that I can get a nice firm background and I'm just going to stamp. I'm, what I'm trying to get, oh that's perfect, is see that image of green and it's just going to look like some green grass. It turned out 
way better than I thought it was even going to. So I'm going to just go along that edge and randomly, in fact, this is going to be kind of hard to get down into this spot here, so I'm going to take it off of the block and kind of just roll it on and press it. That works. See how that's making it look like a nice green grass area at the bottom. Same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of just put it in there and press. And then I'll probably come back in and do it again with the lighter green color. And later I'm going to be adding to this. But for right now, I'm just looking for that basic image of making it look like green grass at the bottom. It's perfect. So next I'm going to lay out my images and decide where they're going to go. And two of them are going to be glued flat to the page, the two on the outside. And then this one, I think, the fox, I'm going to make this one be different. I have an idea. Actually, I think I'm going to do two of them one way and one glued down to the bottom. So I think I'm going to put the raccoon right here and the bunny here and the fox here. And my sing is going to go here. So I kind of needed to figure that out so then I can figure out where I want to put my mushrooms because they're going to go on the page too. I love those mushrooms. They're so cute. They're super cute. Okay, so I just kind of want to lay it out, figure out where everything's going to go. Maybe like this. Okay, I switched them around. I'm putting that one here and this one here. So now that I know where the animals are going to go and the three mushrooms are going to go, I'm going to go ahead and glue my mushrooms into place onto the page. So those three mushrooms are glued into place and now I'm going to remove my little critters here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put some grass over the base of these mushrooms. They have the little lines from uh, the stands if you had used them the traditional way and I could paint over that with some acrylic paint but I think instead I'm going to cover them with some grass so I'm using some scrap papers that I have that are greens I'm going to just flip them over and on the back side I'm going to just draw randomly draw some little grass patches like that and then I'm going to trim them out with my scissors. And then when I flip them over, obviously you won't see the pen marks. And it's just scribbled out grass. It's not too complicated. And then I'll show what it looks like when I cut them out. So here's what the piece of grass looks like. I tore it at the bottom and then just used my scissors to cut into it and make it look grassy. And then I'm going to just glue them into place to cover up those little lines in the um, the mushrooms at the bottom. So here's the grass pieces. There we go. On the mushrooms and it just covered those bases. And now I'm going to glue, this one's going to be flat, so I'm going to glue this raccoon character right here into place just by putting some art glitter glue behind it and gluing it down. So now I just need to look through the cute outfits and decide. They all the outfits fit on each character so I just need to decide which one is going to go on the raccoon and I think I'm going to go with the cute little acorn outfit and since it's glued into the book I'm going to trim it out without the tabs. So I've cut out one and it's going to go right here on this raccoon. Super cute. I have a second one that I printed and I'm going to cut out a few elements that I can make dimensional on that first one. So I'm going to cut out the middle leaf and I'm going to cut out the acorn by itself 
And then I'm going to cut out a couple of the little leaves that go around the neckline and then this leaf that goes in the middle of the hat. So here's the base dress and next I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut a little slit around the base of where that acorn is at the base of the acorn. Just the shape of it where I can slip that other leaf that I cut out. And then I'm also going to go around a couple of these, just the tips of them, not the ones that I'm going to make dimensional and pop up, just a few of the others. This is just a fun trick. I've done this in other videos when I've done like angel wings and it's a way to make them just dimensional. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is where I cut that little slit under that acorn, I'm going to slip this leaf that I cut out and slip it right in there. So see how that makes that stand up and look dimensional? So cute. So what you want to do is just put a little bit of glue a little bit of your art glitter glue just right on the edge and then stick it underneath in that slot where it's going to go rip off the excess and there you go you've got a leaf that's dimensional and then on these up here where I cut I'm going to take some tweezers and just carefully lift those leaves because it's just the point of them. It's not the whole thing. I didn't cut the whole thing. I just cut around the tip. And so I'm just flicking them up with my tweezers underneath. And by doing that, it makes them stand up and look a little bit dimensional. So what I want to do is take my, take my brush pen and wherever there's little cuts like that and around those little leaves that you just cut, you want to touch that up so you don't have those white edges. But that just looks super cute and dimensional like that. Then I'm going to come in with a little pop dot for the acorn. And it obviously needs to be a very small piece, which is okay. If they're too big, just cut them. Cut them to the size you need them to be. And then I'm going to pop that little acorn up. Super cute. And then on these, these little leaves that I cut that go around the collar, I'm just going to take these and wrap them around the handle of a paintbrush to make them round and then kind of flick them up at the edge. And then I'm going to glue them in place. And when you do that, just put a little glue just at the top where it's going to attach. And lay it in place and it's going to bend and look dimensional like the leaf is going the other way. So I'll show you that again. Take a little leaf that I cut out. Wrap it around the handle of a paintbrush so it rounds it and then flick up the ends so it looks like this then it kind of looks like a little half moon shape and then put your glue in place just at the top and put that little leaf on there whoops they're tiny so it's easier to use a tweezers and they don't have to be straight if you turn it just a little bit then the leaf underneath that's covering on the original one will show also and that makes it look like an even extra leaf so that's really cute. Since that pop dot is really white and it kind of shows you can kind of turn it to the side and take your little brush marker and just color that foam core on the pop dot so instead of it being white it'll be the color of the acorn and then it, it camouflages it. So there's my little dimensional leaves on my dress. This leaf pops up, the acorn pops up. It's just really super cute. And that's gonna get glued into place onto this character.
And when I glued this down, I left the edges so that I could curl them up with my fingers just a little bit just to make it even more dimensional. And then on the hat, I've glued it down. I left one little edge up that I've bent. And then this one, I rolled over my paintbrush and put a little half pop dot, and then I'm gonna glue it into place so that this leaf sticks up and will look dimensional. I love this little acorn outfit, it's a darling. This kit is super cute. The designer did a great job on making a really cute kit. And this is just a fun way to decorate it. I mean, you can use it as a regular paper doll kit, but I'm just showing you something to step outside the box and make it even more creative. So look how dimensional that hat is now. Super, super cute. And the shiny little nose, the dimensional dress, the little ballet shoes. Super cute, loving it. Okay, now my super fun idea for these two little guys. They are going to be, um, they're going to be put down in a way that you can still use all the different outfits and change clothes on them. So what I want to do is, if you look at the clothing, all of the folded up edges up here, they're all in the same spot. And for the hats, there's one in the middle. There's tabs to the outside, but those I'm going to cut off. So when I cut out all the outfits, I'm going to leave the two top tabs and then cut the outfit out. So two top tabs, cut out the outfit. And I'm going to cut all the outfits and all the hats out. And I'm going to leave the tab on the hats and have all those pieces cut out just like that. And I'm going to do that next. It comes with these butterflies and they're actually fairy wings that they're created for um, putting on the shoulders and behind the character to make them look like little fairy characters but I'm not going to make my little friends here fairy characters instead I'm going to use these as butterflies three-dimensional butterflies on my page so I'm going to go ahead and trim these out cutting those tabs off that I don't need and then I'll show you my idea. Here are the, the wings cut out. There are fairy wings that I'm turning into butterflies. The purple one I added some cardstock piece at the end when I cut them out I made them a little bit longer because this one's going to look like a dragonfly. This one is a little bit bigger than this one which makes a really nice dimensional butterfly. I love that. So next I'm just going to take a black brush pen and go around those edges and I'm choosing black instead of the color of the butterflies because black will make them stand out a bit more and their little bodies are going to be in black on the page. So I'm going to go around each one in black and then I'm going to take some uh, sparkling Nouveau drops and color in all the dots to make them sparkly. Before I add the Nouveau drops, I'm going to use this Spectrum Noir Sparkle. This is a glitter ink and it is the clear one. So it's just got some really frosty, gorgeous glitter inside of the ink. There's a little ball inside to shake it up and I'm going to use a fine paintbrush. And I'm just going to brush on some of this right onto these wings. Just in some outward strokes from the center out. And then let that dry, but look what that does. See if you can see. See the sparkle and shine it gives them? It just makes them just super glittery. Doesn't show up great. There you go. There you go on camera but it makes them super sparkly so i'm going to add some glitter to them and then i'm going to um, add these uh, nouveau drops to the dots so these look super cute they're glittery and then i use some orange nouveau drops to make some dimensional dots i'm going to put them aside to let them dry and now i'm going to come back and work some more on my page now what i want to do next i want to put a saying on the background of the of the page and so what i'm going to do is put these into place put the characters into place and i'm going to take a st black stabilo pencil and i'm going to go around each character just setting it into place i'm going to raise that one up just a tiny bit like that and the reason for this is this if I put them on the page now 
they're going to be in my way for uh, doing my drawing on the, the words on the page with uh, Posca paint pens. So this way I'm going to use this behind them anyway to make a cast shadow. So I might as well just trace around them then I know exactly where they're going to go. I can remove it and when I do my words then it's not in the way for me to write my words on the page and I'll know exactly where the characters are going to be. So I'm going to just do that with that one and then do it with this one. Same thing. Draw around my little fox just with a little a little line. And this way I'll know where the words can be where they won't be interfering with the critters, the cute little critter characters. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put my words on the page. I added my words to the page. I just used a fine point black Posca pen and I uh, have the words life is better with friends because this is such a cute friends page. So my little characters are going to go in place where I drew my little lines around so them. So here are their clothes that I chose and because I had printed out two of each of the sets, I was able to do that same layering that I did on my little raccoon's dress over here. I did the same thing over here where I cut this piece out separate and popped it up so it makes this little dress look dimensional. Then I put a little Nouveau drop in the middle of the flower. Super cute. Same with the little headpiece. I popped up the second flower. I cut out the second flower individual, tipped it so that you can see the leaves underneath and then um, bent my little tab for wearing the headpiece and put some Nouveau drops in the middle. And this one, I decorated it with sparkly Nouveau drops and some paper flowers that I had that looked like little pansies, since this is a pansy outfit, and put little Nouveau drops in the center so there's a little pansy outfit. And her little hat is layered too, so that it looks just makes them dimensional. This one I took embroidery floss and a needle and thread and I stitched her little outfit. Same with this one. Purple embroidery floss, stitched it, put a little tool. I cut the little design that was in it and I put some orange tool behind it just for something interesting. Layered this one. And this one I added some decorative little flowers to it. So there are my little outfits just with the tabs on the shoulders. So what I want to do for adding my little people to the pages is if you put, let's just work on this one over here. If you put it down and I put it into place, I can glue the legs and the feet solid with glue. And then what I'm going to do is put pop dots behind it so that I can still add um, the outfits to it. So what I want to do on the back side is put a pop dot right in the center because I don't want to um, I don't want to impede where those little tabs are going to go behind it. So I'm going to put the pop-ups right in the center of the body right here and one on the head so it leaves enough space for that tab at the top to put on a little headpiece. And then I'm going to put art glitter glue on the bottom half of the body and the legs. Just like that. And then I'm going to put her into place. And I've got my little stabilo lines to show me where to put her. Press it down, press it down. So what that did, oh, so cute on the page. It makes it look dimensional, but then it also is going to allow me to be able to put an outfit on this cute little bunny. So with the outfits, I took my little bone folder and I went straight across the shoulder back and forth just to make a little line with the bone, bone folder and that makes the tabs really nice and easy to fold over like this. Okay, so it's folded over and then the tab on the hat is the same. Let's put these aside. 
And now I can dress my little bunny by sticking that tab behind her head, putting it on her, putting the little tabs behind her shoulders, and putting this dress on her. So look at that. How cute is that? That I can dress that bunny in that outfit. And they're popping up a little bit, but that's because I don't have the tabs folded down really super flat. You could burnish them with your bone folder and make those tabs flatter. And the flatter the tabs are, I just don't want those tabs to, to break. But look at how cute. Oh my gosh, it's so darling. So now I can come into this page and I can dress up that bunny in that outfit. Or I can change that bunny into this outfit. So look how cute that is. Darling. Oh my gosh, so cute. So I'm going to do the same thing with the fox. I'm going to put pop dots behind his head and the middle of his body, glue their leg, her legs down. And then the same, the little fox will be able to be dressed in these outfits as well. So my animals have been glued down. I did glue down his tips of the fox's ears, the, whisk, the fur over here, and then a little bit of his arms. So you can tuck behind and tuck behind the head. So cute. And I'm leaving the bunny's ears loose because I love them kind of sticking up. And now because this is kind of up high, I need to make some grass patches and I'm using Arteza brush pens. I love these. They're great, especially for making grass. It's easy to just put them down. Let me go closer so you can see. Put it down and pull up and you get a nice point because they're such nice little brush pens that it looks like grass. As it needs to be, these guys need to be standing in some more grass. They're kind of up high kind of up on a hill and I can put a little bit down here they're a water soluble brush pen it's got a water soluble ink in it so that's really cute for making some grass that they're standing in super cute so I went over this whole bottom edge here and added some grass. I went on the bottom of the paper grass that I cut out so it kind of ties it in and it doesn't look so disconnected and it looks like the little characters are standing on little grass patchy knolls. So cute. It's coming out just darling. I love this page. So the next thing I'm going to do is take those pieces that I made into um, butterflies and decide where I want to put them in this one that is two different sizes is gonna be layered on top of each other so I'm gonna just fold them and I'm not folding them in one in the middle I'm making kind of like two folds so that it bends and it's got kind of a flat little middle section and then I'm gonna glue that one to this one Just put a little glue in the middle and it's going to make this butterfly nice and dimensional. Super cute. I love that. And then I just need to decide where it's going to go on the page. Be great up here in this spot. Uh, maybe do, let's see, the other one. This one is just a single one. But I'm also going to make that center section a little bit flat for gluing it. Let's put this one up here and let's put this one down here going the other way up in the corner so this is cute I made use of those fairy wings and made them into dimensional butterflies just add something really fun to the page and then I think I'll put my dragonfly right here Cute. 
This page is just way too cute. Okay, and I'm gonna let those dry for just a second. Look how fun that looks with those dimensional butterflies. So fun. Now I'm gonna take a Posca pen in a PC7M. This is a dot, a nice thick dot, and I'm gonna make the bodies of my little critters here. So I'm gonna put two dots to make great dots. Two little dots for the dragonfly and then come down and make a body. So that made a dragonfly body. And then over here do the same thing. A dot and a dot and a line and a dot and a line for my butterflies. Making bodies for my little critter, my little bugs. Oh my gosh, so cute. This page is just too fun. I just adore this paper doll set from Crazy Fox Paper. It's so cute. And I did step out of the box to make it a little bit different and use it in a little bit unusual manner. And I think that's what's really fun is to try something fun and different. So um, now I'm going to take a... Tumble Mono drying pen and make the little um, antennas. And dragonflies don't have antennas, so I'm just making antennas on the butterflies. Okay, let me show you those up close. Here are my three-dimensional butterflies with Nouveau drops and little bodies drawn on with Posca pen. The one turned into a dragonfly and this one that's doubled. I love that, the double one with the two sizes of wings that made a beautiful dimensional double butterfly. So cute. Look at that. Okay, and then here are my little characters and we can put little outfits on them. So we can dress up our little animals. I could have done that with this one as well. You can do your page any way you'd like. I kind of like that only two change clothes and that this one is stays the same. But look at, oh my gosh, so cute. So cute. And then let's put the little hat on. And they'll get creased better over time. But oh my gosh, so cute. Let's put this little outfit on this one. Easy to dress up your little critters. So you could do this with any paper doll kit. This is a great way to do an interactive page in your art journal and be able to change clothes with your critters or your paper doll girl. Look at how cute. Life is better with friends. So there's my idea, and I'm going to just keep the little outfits in a little envelope that I'm going to just put a fancy clip up here on this page. So when I come to this page in my art journal, I'll have the envelope to pull out the little dresses and outfits to be able to change them on my page. So it's got the dimensional little mushrooms and dimensional butterflies and dimension in the outfits here. I think I am going to change up the eyes on the raccoon. Um, I just want to add a little bit something to those eyes. So I think I'm going to go around those eyes in brown with a Posca pen. And then in black, and then a little white highlight, because it wasn't dry yet. Let your pens dry. 
Now I'm going to take a Posca pen. It's in a PC3M, which is a smaller bullet tip. And this one is aqua green. It's like a turquoise color. And I'm going to come over here and make some dot swirls. This is just a decorative thing that just adds movement and interest to the page. I've done this on other pages and shown this before. But if you just add that cute little whimsical something to it, it's just kind of fun. And it's kind of like the effect of butterflies swirling around in the air. And it's just decorative. Just add something to that background. So you just dot and add more dots where you think it needs to be thicker. And make your little trail. Kind of like just doing stippling with a paint pen. But look how cute that looks. Just add some whimsy to the page. And the last thing I want to do is to come back in here with my Stabilo pencil and go around these characters and make a little shadow. So I'm just going and coloring some Stabilo along the edge and then I'm going to blend it out. And that'll just make a nice little shadow and it'll make them pop off the page. And it's water activated so I'm just using a water brush to gently go over it, go around it, and just blend it out. Makes for a quick, cute shadow. See how that just makes it pop out and stand out a little bit better. And I only put the shadow on one side, so if it's on the left, then like the left side of this leg, I wouldn't go on the right sides. I'm only going to go on the left sides of each of the animals and even the mushrooms because you have a light source and the sun will be shining this way. And so this side of the animal would be in shadow. Hope that hopefully that makes sense my to you. My household has been going through a tough time right after Christmas. My beloved dog Maya passed away unexpectedly. And then I rescued a little dog. He's two years old. This is see if you can see him. Ooh. Say hi. Hi baby. This is Jesso. He's two years old and he's very needy. And very sweet and his owner passed away and so I went to a small dog rescue and rescued this little dog and I've named him Jesso because of my love of art supplies so he loves to sit on my lap while I create art he's happy in his new home so he is my new little dog Jesso so meet Jesso So there it is. I hope you enjoyed this page. It was a really fun way of using this kit. There will be a link in the description box below with a uh, code for if you want to buy the kit from this Etsy shop. It's Crazy Fox Paper and a discount code if you want a discount. You can try making an art journal page like I have or you can use them in the traditional paper doll way. So I hope you had fun. This was great fun. I enjoyed it and I hope you're making art today because art soothes the heart. Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Mm -hmm.